with us today. There it is. Uh, although you have been uh, faithful to come often and, uh, and to consult with us, uh, for which we're grateful every time you come is a uh, special occasion, of course. And, it's and on this particular occasion, uh, some of us wanted to present you with a little something that would be a commemoration of your visit here today. And without wanting to be uh, presumptuous and knowing that, of course, you're a man who has uh, just about everything, Nonetheless, we did think there might be one thing that we could present you today that would be useful, particularly as you reflect on some of the bills that will be coming uh, from Congress to your desk, maybe the public financial elections and others that are coming down the pike, that this might be something which we could uh, present to you with, which you would like to have and would find uh, useful.
we must continue to go to the heart of the Opening up markets where they're closed, working to expand world trade and the millions of jobs that it creates, rather than shrink the global economy and throw millions out of work. And the summit, at the summit, we also made real progress in the area of agricultural subsidies. Perhaps no other economic issue creates more tension between our countries. Disagreements in no other area so threaten the health of our world trade system. Now I've issued a challenge for all our nations to end the farms race. Eliminate agricultural subsidies and return the free market to agriculture by the year 2000. In our discussions, our allies pointed with some justification in our budget deficit. Now it's true that deficits in Europe are sometimes just as big or bigger in proportion to their gross national product, but that doesn't let us have the problem. Deficits are simply a destructive economic force. They are a giant drain on the productive economy a huge disguised tax on the private sector. In fact, the only thing worse than deficits is high taxes. We don't have to choose, we're not going to choose. Between them. Using taxes to cure deficits is like using leeches to cure a demon. We're not going to encounter one evil with another, we're going to eliminate them both. Deficits are going away of high taxes. They're both being mowed down to make way for a new era of growth and opportunity. As I said last night, we've reached the breaking point. Now it's decision time. Some in Congress are caving in with its old temptations, its old tax and spend addictions. If we give in, it'll ruin our economy. The situation's urgent. So, what do we propose? Well, to exceed their own spending. Democrats propose to pay for this spending binge by cutting our national security programs to dangerous levels, by dumping $100 billion in new taxes on the American people over the next four years. So that's why I'm stepping up my commitment to this cause and taking my case to the American people. It won't be a political campaign. It will be a campaign of all Americans to bring back economic sanity. Just as we did for tax reform, we're now going to do for the balanced approach in dealing with the budget process. And we're not going to be shy about pointing fingers and blitzing blame. The American people wanted a fair tax code. Despite all the expert opinion, they won. Now we're calling for reform in the budget process. We're demanding an end to the boondoggle to the waste in the last minute of resolutions. We want every member of Congress to stand up and become a vote, up or down, yes or no, on an amendment that once and for all will end deficit spending. We once and for all balance the budget. We may have lost our Senate majority, but the country must look to our side of the aisle for leadership. You are the bulwark that stands against those who would plunge our nation back into the Malaise days of economic stagnation at home and weakness abroad. Well, we're not retreating into the past, and we're not hunkering down in defensive positions just trying to hold on to the ground we've gained. In the coming months, we're going on the offensive in a big way. We're going to be taking our case directly to the American people because with the American people there will always be a majority for a strong and growing America. Now there's one other development that I want to report to you on. As I told the American people last night, we've reached a full consensus with our allies on our arms reduction negotiating position. Six years ago, the U.S. proposed a step called the Zero Option complete elimination of U.S. and Soviet land-based longer-range INF missiles. Many said our proposal was unrealistic. The Soviets, they insisted, would never accept it. And indeed, the Soviets walked away from the table. But we remained firm, firm and determined. But now the Soviets have adopted a similar position when they're back at the table. With the support of our allies, we're now also proposing the global elimination of all U.S. and Soviet land-based short-range INF missiles. 
along with deep reductions in and hopefully the ultimate elimination of longer range INF missiles. This is impressive progress. But as our allies agreed, this must be only the beginning of progress across the field, including an agreement to cut U.S. and Soviet strategic nuclear arms by 50%. We must redouble our efforts on regional conflicts in Afghanistan especially. It didn't take the Soviets very long to invade that country. They should be able to get out even faster. Last but not least, We'll continue to press for progress on the Soviet systematic violations of the Helsinki guarantees on human rights. As I said at the Berlin Wall, a nation that's so frightened of its own people that it treats them like prisoners will always be a source of tension in the world. If Mr. Gorbachev's actions match his words, then I said it there, tear down the wall, open the gate.